running the old facer last night and it's getting loud. And like most things that get loud, they get kind of, it means they're getting dull. I guess that applies to machines and people. I'm about to do something I really don't like to do. I have to rotate the cutters in my facer. But since it's not a lot of fun, I thought I could try to make it fun and have you suffer through some of it. And then when it's all over, I'm gonna show you how we use our facer to make exceptionally flat wood. First things first, I gotta change the cutters and that sucks. Chip, are you willing to help me today? Mm, I'm not getting a real good response here. What do you think, Chip? Oh, that was a, not a no, that was a hell no. I know, Chippy. Nobody wants to do this stuff. <laughs> you just gonna sit out here and enjoy it, huh? Yeah, okay, you just supervise. Well guys, looks like it's you and me. This is a 20 incher. Kind of put it in perspective of my cell phone. If you'll notice, this has a ground bed. It's got these big surface machine marks in it. Those are air grooves. If you have a machine that <laughs> that's really ugly grind marks, then you probably got a pretty crappy machine because <laughs> they didn't want to clean up the grind. If you've got a machine that's got a really smooth ground bed, that's next level up, that's always a good indication. Smoothly ground bed means that the company's doing something right. At the far end though, is a company that grinds the bed smooth, then has to go back and put these air grooves in it. They're just one big grind, and that is to allow air to get under the table to help remove the board, because if the table is ground too flat and the board is too flat, then it actually sticks to the table and makes it kind of harder to push. So in a lot of ways, this acts like an old school air hockey table. Of course, it is three phase spring assist on the table. I like machines where I can adjust the table accurately and repeatedly pretty much every board as I need it. Xylence, X-Y-L-E-N-T. And these are second generation cutters. These are like birds on steroids. So anyway, the cool thing about a silent head is their spiral is very aggressive and what that does, it allows certain portions of the board not to be in the cutter head. So it basically unloads the motor, the electric motor, and allows it to uh, stay at max horsepower. Let's go talk to Chip again. Hey Chip, you ready to help again? <laughs> He's like, are you crazy? I'm already curled up in the sun. The cool thing about SCMI they really are top of the line. They come with their own torque wrenches, give you a spare. They give you a cleanup fluid, various brushes, all kinds of stuff. I have not seen anything better than an SCMI in a facer. That's why I got it. These are Torx heads. You got to break these things loose. You put a little WD on them. You want to be stupid gentle. You want to just tap them a little bit. Break them loose. If you go really stupid crazy, trust me, you will regret it. This cutter head does get a little rusty. I'm not sure why. We use it all the time. Degrees, you don't want to go, if this corner's rounded and this corner's rounded and you rotate 90 like most people do, you got a sharp corner rotated and then a dull corner. So you typically wanna go, if this side's dull, you wanna rotate 180. Let's take it out and look at it. While we're at it, let's give the old thing a little brush. Never use a wire brush towards the cutting edge. So we're gonna rotate this guy down to where two and three is. Gently put him in. And then we'll torque it. There you go. Basically what happens is you put this in there and then it'll snap when you're at the right torque. See how that works? 
All right, next. So I like pulling the kernels off a cob of corn, cleaning them and putting them back on. The suck factor is pretty high. So I'm gonna stop filming and just get to doing. So you can see how high up that is. I'll grab it right in the middle. Doesn't deflect the boards at all. I want the teeth to just touch it right there. There you go. Flat as a pancake. One hand. Like that. Most times, all it takes is a sixteenth of an inch on your planer to get almost one full face flat or nearly one full face. This is how you do it in real time. Find a boat upside. There. Main thing is you're trying to find a spot where it's contacting the bed. That way when you push down, it won't push up. That should be your lowest spot. And then you just walk it through. Lowest spot right here. This is up. See it's moving. Catches it, now it's flat. Done. Nice and slow so you can pick it up on the camera. Now you might be wondering why exactly am I going through this? I've got this high dollar flattening planer. Well, it's because these boards are the worst of the worst. Look at that. And yeah, it'll take them out, but sometimes it needs a little help. Now I ain't saying there's not other ways to flatten a board. But we have flattened probably hundreds of thousands of board feet. This is the worst of the worst. They have issues, they have twists. Even our double sided doesn't like to take twist out. I mean, it can, but with this one two punch, an extremely high grade, high quality facer and a really good planer, you can take the worst of the boards that you got left at the end of the week. Um, the ones that have a little twist, one little ragged, just nasty ones. Run them through there real quick, run them through there real quick. As flat as a piece of glass. This is walking them through. Yeah, you can use two hands and there's other techniques. I'm not saying they don't work. This is the fastest, the easiest. It just takes a lot of horsepower and you're running them through about as fast as you can walk. Maybe a little slower, but you're not sitting here babying them and pushing them and uh-uh. Just walk them through. Martha's marking every board making sure it passes her inspection. If it doesn't, it gets kicked out. It doesn't go on the rack. When you consider how every single port in this building has, has, has had to pass the Martha test, I mean, literally, every single board, that's a lot of boards, then that says something. And what do you get when you're done? I mean, look at this ash. I mean, just look at it. Every board's laying as flat as a pancake. Every board. Let's do it. Let's go crank the generator up and get it warmed up while she brings a forklift over. Wood stacked everywhere. We'll have all this cleaned up by the weekend. Ooh, look at this sassafras. Dang. Isn't that pretty? That must be hobby hardwood wood. Forklift coming over. In case you're wondering, we run a 483 phase 7.3 liter. And like most generators, you really want to have a battery connect switch. I installed a new fuel control system on this thing. It's been running great. I still have the timing light hooked up. Oh, <laughs> better get my gloves. In case you're wondering, that's 65 kilowatt. We're already set at three quarters of an inch. We're taking a 16th off the bottom. Let's get the bottom head running. Top head. Feed. 
Berlin. You'll hear the bottom head hit. That's just re-flattening the bottom. Then you'll hear the top head right there. That's running the thickness. I've got the feed set to a speed where I like it. I don't like a planer to pull a board out of my hand at all. I want to push it in until I feel it, then I can let go. I don't like it to just pull it. What if my hand palm? I got a buddy who had some gloves on and a splinter grabbed his hand, went through the glove all the way into his hand, almost pulled him into the planer. Pretty ugly. So once again, we're, we're re-flattening out the bottom. Any place I didn't get with a facer. And we're just bringing the top back down to three quarters. So now we'll have a true S4S board, just like it's a sword. There's one major difference. Every one of these guys is as flat as a piece of glass. The other thing is, yeah, I could feed a whole lot faster, but then I get Martha mad at me. You kind of develop a rhythm where the boards can come out. You can look at them. I can feed them, no big deal. Hey, I can see those boards coming out. They're flat over there, laying on that cart. Yeah. I would say I almost broke a sweat, but I didn't. It's too easy. In case you're wondering, we made these carts here at the old Hobby Hardwood. They're the perfect size for picking up with a forklift. You can't buy these anywhere else for $1,000. No, 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 no. For $10,000, <laughs> I filled you some carts. How's that sound? All right, I'll give you a deal, $7,000. I'll build you a cart. <laughs> We've got the wheel space perfectly so she can drive right up to them. It's heavy metal too. You can't buy these at Lowe's, Home Depot, Granger, anywhere else. Drive right up to them, look at that. Pick them up. Pull them back. Thumbs up. Let's shut this generator off now. What we just did right there was the difference between pushing marginally crap wood out or trying to just take those last couple steps to make it the best. Oh look, there's some deer up there. You can see them up on that hill. They're up there eating. All right, let's call this one. Are y'all ready? ready? Chip, are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. You can tell he's ready. Oh. He's got him a chip of wood. That's why we call him Chip. He can't go anywhere. Look at his tail wagging. He's so proud. What you got, Chip? Show everybody at home. Hey, Chip, can I sit down here? Can I sit here too? So we got our 45 second commute back to the house. Tell you what, we will see y'all next week. I hope y'all enjoyed this one. Oh, I guess we got to walk the dogs. I'm not done yet. Thanks for visiting our sawmill. Click on the links above to see more of our videos.